Hi, this is Andrew with Aspimo TV, and I have such a fun guest today, Dr. Suzanne Auerbach. She's trained in child development, psychology, education, and special education, and is one of the nation's leading professionals on children's play and educational toys. She's, a, she's known as Dr. Toy and is the author of Smart Play, Smart Toys, How to Raise a Child with a High PQ Play Quotient. Dr. Toy, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be with you to talk about my favorite subject, play and toys. And I've got a toy right here that I'm playing. We're going to talk about the importance of toy variety. So, yes. Dr. Toy, can you tell me what are the different kinds of toys designed for children? Well, Andrew, there are over 100,000 toys available in the marketplace from all around the world, made in different parts of the world and sold around the world. And toys come in a great deal of variety of materials, and they have many different purposes, from baby to older people. Everybody benefits from toys. I roughly organize toys into three categories, active, creative, and educational. And toys generally fall in one or more of these, or they are combined. And toy can be creative and educational, or active and creative. Um, toys include everything from dolls, baby and preschool toys, products of all kinds like transportation themes like cars, trucks, or trains, uh, wooden blocks, construction toys, and much more. We know that there are over 100,000 different toys made in many different varieties of materials. This tangle toy is made out of plastic. It was originally a sculpture. And uh, the artist who created it thought it would make a fun toy. It's great for everybody to play with because it exercises the hand and develops eye-hand coordination, keeps us calm. So toys are great, fun, and wonderful for all ages. Why is it important to have a variety and balance of these toys? Well, what we want in play is variety and balance because it's the most beneficial. Um, we can always um, focus on one thing, but we do very well when we get away from something, try something else, and go back to the original activity. Um, so we need balance in our lives every day. Um, and any toy helps a child with their skills, with their uh, learning, with their abilities to uh, focus and um, the ability to practice skills. So toys are a wonderful way for children to play, but they also help them to learn better and reduce their uh, frustrations because they gain skills and feel confident uh, as they become better players. Um, toys should offer challenges, but not be so difficult that the child gets frustrated. And that's true for adults, too. You know, when we start out, we shouldn't start with, say, a thousand-piece puzzle. We might start with, you know, a couple of hundred pieces and build up to a more complex. What are the Go from simple technology-based toys. Should they also be incorporated into every child's toy collection? And what are the limitations? Well, technology has come into the toy industry, but actually um, started with a product called Teddy Buxpin uh, back in 1985. And now we have Furby and we have LeapFrog and a lot of other high-tech products. Um, of course, we have iPads and iPhones and a lot of other things like apps. Uh, technology has made a lot of advances in toys, and it's definitely exciting and interesting and innovative. Uh, <clears throat> there are many ways that toys can benefit from technology, and technology benefits from toys. Um, some games are now uh, in app form. Um, toys can be played with on a computer. There are uh, uh, an expansion of toys, an interest in toys because of technology. And the world has gotten smaller through technology, and toy exchanges are happening around the world, just like we are doing today. Um, so I'm very happy about the technology and what it's doing to bring the world together and for everyone to understand how important play is. But we also don't want 
children to move into technology without experiencing crayons, Play-Doh, and um, creating finger paints, and having basic experiences of building things themselves and learning to create for themselves. They need to play real board games and not just go right to video games. They need to use puzzles and not just use apps. Um, the brain develops through these experiences, and uh, if you eliminate them and don't have them, it's not good for the child's brain and development and their creativity and their uh, a total experience as a person. Uh, the social experiences of playing together with a board game is very different than playing with an app by yourself. So you need a balance. If a child develops a preference or dislike for a particular toy genre, uh, should a parent allow the genre to take a back seat if the child just seems happy with it? Well, I believe that a child is sort of instrumental in finding their interests and what they are most interested in. Um, introduce the toy to a child. Let them explore it. Let them discover what they can do. See if it holds his interest. Uh, some girls like to play blocks and others like to draw pictures or play with dolls. Some boys like, boys like to play soccer and, ball and, and throw balls and others may like to do puzzles and science kits. Um, everybody is different and each individual child has their own individual interests and experiences that they want to explore. So we need to be patient, we need to focus, and we need to give them opportunities to have their own concentration and their own experiences. So what the best way is, is to introduce it and let them uh, explore and see what they can do with the toy. Uh, anything from something simple to something more complex, children are going to learn from it. And it's good to have a variety. What's a good way for parents to introduce the new toys or games? Well, if the toy requires skills, uh, like playing a game, uh, you need to know the instructions. You need to know how to play the game. You need to uh, understand the rules. You need to read those things together so everybody understands how to play with it. And then a toy might need to have some special instruction that they need to understand before they can do the toy. But it should be appropriate for their age and their skills so that they can play with it alone if it's possible. But again, if it's something that requires instructions, the parent and the child can figure these things out together and it will be more enjoyable if they experience it together and uh, have an opportunity to introduce it. They should always have the freedom to explore their playthings and figure things out for themselves also, as long as they don't get so frustrated that they don't want to play. Dr. Toy, it was a pleasure speaking with you about the importance of toy variety. Thank you so much. Thank you.